It's funny the Yankees. Guys, guys, quiet, yeah. quiet. Three, two, one. Go. And welcome into Pressbox Live. This is Stan the Fan Charles of Pressbox and PressboxOnline.com. With me on these Thursday night uh, uh, gallivants into the world of sports is the one and only gallivanting Gary Stein. Gary, how are you tonight? I like that. Can we can we use that? Gallivant right. Gary Stein? Yes, I like that. We can trade market. And we've got a guy with us who's smiling because he's the Skip Prosser Coach Man of the Year <laughs> award winner for 2023. And we're going to talk to him in just a second. First, I got to tell you a little bit about A.J. Michaels, expert and award winning. A.J. Michaels heating, A.C., plumbing and home performance will improve your home's energy efficiency and comfort levels. A.C. season is coming up fast and you may need it more than ever right now, your A.C. New rebates and discounts are available more at ajmichaels.com. And as always, we thank the folks at the Costas Inn. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the Costas Inn about 10, 12 minutes into this. But first, we start with uh, Coach Pat Scary of Towson University. And Pat, uh, you're poo-pooing it. You got this prestigious Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award back in late March. Uh, it's pretty. It's got to be pretty meaningful to you because I know you knew Skip a little bit. Well, first, Stan the Fan and Gallivant and Gary, it's always – Good to join you guys. Um, no, look, I, I'm, I'm honored and humbled that um, we received some recognition for that. A lot of it had to do with our autism awareness efforts. Uh, the folks at College Insider, Angela Lento and Joe Dwyer, Jamie Cashmerick, I, I appreciate that. Coach Prosser, obviously, uh, you know, uh, was the type of coach, I think, on and off the court that um, any coach would want to try to be like and, and he, he just had um you know remarkable success and obviously stan as you know and gary he was gone uh, much much too soon un, un, unfortunately i just read it today i just couldn't believe it it's amazing when people pass years go by and you tend to think it's like seven or eight or ten years it's been 17 years wow you know, 16, 16 years uh. 2007 in july that Skip passed away. He was only here for a year, but we knew him. Um, you poo-poo the award, winning the award a little, and some of the people you beat out for this, this is a, a list that's about 10 more, but are uh, Ryan Odom. You finally beat Ryan Odom at something. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's, Ryan a, Odom Ryan's, a, Ryan's a good yeah, friend kidding. And, and a, and a uh, tremendous coach. Trem John, John Shire at Duke. Matt Painter, Purdue, Jerry Stackhouse, Steve Pickle over at Rutgers, and Michael Boynton out at Oklahoma State. A list of about 10 or 12 more. But so all those guys, Stan, were big-time players. I definitely couldn't beat any of those guys in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. I can tell you that right now. But you could might have beaten them in a game of horse. But all <laughs> kidding aside, before we hey. move into some stuff about the program, about your program that you've done such a great job at, Towson, uh, the, the autism awareness, tell us what started that. I know your son has autism. How's he doing with it? Is he thriving? And what was behind your efforts to start autism awareness in college basketball? Well, like you said, it really was trying to use our platform as coaches to bring awareness to what is the world's largest developmental disorder. And there's no known cure for it. Um, We've been lucky to be here in in Baltimore because of the community and support services that we have. And our son Owen's 14 and is, uh, goes to the Trellis School up in Hunt Valley, which has just been an awesome experience. But, you know, Pathfinders for Autism, um, that B.J. Suroff. And his, his wife. Organization, so his yep. wife, Polly. Uh, 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 they're unbelievable. So, so many others, you know, whether it's Kennedy Krieger and, we, we, we've been the Husband Center on campus. We, we've just been fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, the, the impetus behind it, those things, was it cost the average family about fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year to get the services they need, and you know, not not everyone uh, has the ability to do that. So that was really the the impetus behind trying to have an awareness weekend. All right. Well, you've done you've done some great work, and you shouldn't poo poo winning the award because 
it's well deserved. Gary, I move to you. Well, Pat, let me ask you because uh, just to stay with with autism for a second, I've always wondered this, but I've never had the courage or really maybe even the opportunity to ask. You know, you see a lot of shows like on Netflix and cable about families that have autistic children. There's love on the spectrum or, or, you know, people that have autism are trying to find love. There's atypical where the young boy has autism. And I'm sure you've seen these shows or know about these shows. I just wonder from somebody who has a child in the real world who has autism, are those shows accurate at all? Like, is it a fair depiction of what life is like? You know, that's a really an insightful question. Um, I don't watch a lot of those shows. I think a lot of people think autism, I think going back Rain Man, and there are right. some in, incredibly high functioning uh, people on the spectrum that we have a saying in, in the autism community, if you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. Everybody is, is totally um, different. That's not our situation, but um, our guy, Owen, has made a, a lot of really good strides. Um, well, I know some other uh, families that have a, a son or daughter on the spectrum who, you know, have it in, in, in incredibly challenging. You know, like for us, we're, we're probably never going to be um, empty nesters, but now we're, we're, ex we're excited about that. Um, so, you know, I think, I, and I'm not trying to poo-poo any of this and, and um, you know, look at everybody deals with stuff in their life. And sometimes I say, if you threw everyone through all their issues and into the half court at CQ arena, after <laughs> everyone threw that stuff in there, we'd all probably go back and take our own issues right back, right back with us. So um, we're on two teams, Gary, and we're happy to serve them both the Towson Tigers and the autism team here in Baltimore County. Let me ask you, Pat, from, from your perspective, I mean, you know, you have a pretty, you know, high pressure, high profile job. I mean, you've got to win games and you have to do it in front of thousands of people and sometimes on national television. So this isn't like you go to an office and you sit in front of a computer and at five o'clock in the afternoon, you go home. My question is, how do you balance the pressures of your job and taking care of those 15 or so players that you have to every day and then come home and take care of your family. Yeah, well, first of all, my wife, Kristen, we've been married for 24 years, is, is a rock star. She, she, she runs the house at home. I couldn't, I get to go to work every day. And she reminds me, I get to do this. I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have to do it. Um, so she's really the, you know, I, I'm like the, uh, I'm like the graduate assistant on the totem pole at home. The dog, my dog, Tiger, is ahead of me, <laughs> trust me. Um, <laughs> But, but I'm not a big hobby guy, Gary. Like, I, I love the work. Um, there hasn't been a day that I haven't been jacked up to to be at Towson. And then we do – I say this all the time, but we do have to win games, right? I mean, I lost 31 my first year. So I've perfected the handshake after games when you when you get beat. But I, I, I think the best part about the job is the opportunities you're afforded to build relationships with players and staff that, that that is the best part about the job now you got to win games or you can't you know the average person forget about forget about the relationships but it's it's a balancing act but like i said we we, we get to do this and my old man was a uh, is, is still alive he, he's a lawyer and he always tells me that i'm in the entertainment business much like you guys or he says professional wrestling he goes you're not in the, you're not in the real world <laughs> <laughs> that's true probably yeah <laughs> hey pat uh you were hired by Mike Waddell, and that was two ADs ago. Uh, and then he was replaced by Tim Leonard. And now Tim Leonard's out, and Stephen Eichenbrod's in. Uh, what's the relationship there? How different is it when a new guy takes over that you weren't the hire of? Yeah, you know what? Um, and then don't forget, Danny Crowley was here for a year for yep. us, obviously. Yep. And we're going to go on our seventh president. Um, yeah. So a lot of, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of people that I know in the business, like, what do you, when the president and the AD leaves, you got to get out of here. I've been unbelievably fortunate. Every AD and president that's been here, whether they've been interim or full-time, they, they've all been really good. Now, is it frustrating um, at times to maybe have to, a new leadership regime to come in and reassess everything? Yeah, maybe, but like, I love Steve Eigenbrot. Um, this guy, um, 
he's he's about 10 years younger than me but I, he's in I, I love how fast he runs and yep. how incredibly how incredibly smart he is um well that and, comes and he's, from, he, that comes from a coach who was hired by Mike Waddell and said at his at his introductory press conference that Mike Waddell would scare a cup of coffee <laughs> he did he, he made he made coffee he made coffee nervous but we, we have we've had obviously Mike and and and, 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 and Tim was now the AD at, um, at Southern Illinois, um, did a great job for us. And, and, and Steve's doing, a, Steve's doing a great job too. I, I think it's more, um, I think what you learn is you start to evolve as the coach is, you know, you serve the university and, and hopefully you can do a good job at it and, and, and try to make it a little bit better. One thing I, I've liked about Steve is, as I think he, um, he understands that when he came in here, the place certainly wasn't broken. It was on an upward trajectory. But then he's also injected some some ideas and, and routines and trying to change some habits to hopefully take us up even further. So um, I, I, I I appreciate these athletic directors have a really hard job. Gary knows yeah. this because you know he does he's courtside a lot at UMBC and, and they've had yeah. some very good ADs. These they have incredibly difficult jobs. I, I think a lot of time nobody ever calls the AD saying, "Boy, Johnny was prepared for class today," or. <laughs> or coach ran a great play on third down. I, I, they are, they are crisis management coordinators on steroids. Stan. Yeah. Yeah. No question about it. Pat, I got to follow that up with asking you, you've been there now. What's it? 16 years at Towson. Well, I no, like what you're thinking. I, I think, I think while well, you two, I've been here 12, but I'd like to keep 12. It going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got that out. Uh, I got that wrong. You've been there 12 years. How much now how frustrating is it or is it invigorating that the system you had in place that was working pretty good, it's almost like the world blew up around you, you know, with the NIL and the transfer portal. How much dip, more difficult is your job to get those W's been made by these changes or do you embrace the changes and say, hey, we're going to fight through this? And we're going to be better and stronger from them. Well, you know, it, it's certainly a changing, challenging landscape, right? And um, one thing I've told um, Steve Eigenbrot is that, you know, uh, when I first got here, APR banned us, and we didn't let that take us down. And then I thought the pandemic almost took us down. We might have been the worst team in the country. So we're certainly not going to let NIL and the transfer portal take us down. So we, we I, I believe what we've been really fortunate the last two years. And again, we started workouts this week. I love my group of guys. Like it, it's, they're really, really quality human beings. Um, and I think they're in this for the right reason. Now, with that said, we, we have launched a, a collective, a go collective, G O H collective.com. And absolutely. We want our student athletes to be able to monetize, uh, they're an asset based on their name, image, and likeness, especially here in in, in the Baltimore area. So um, we're, we're committed to helping them, uh, you know, make make some money and, and uh, get some resources. I, th I think it's a tremendous thing. But you understand, yeah. I mean, obviously, you understand this. You got Nicholas Timberlake who leaves and goes to one of the top, probably ten programs in the country in Kansas. And you kind of brought him along and got him to that point. That's got to be, you're happy for the kid, but it's got to be kind of frustrating. Well, honestly, when, in Nick's situation, he's from where I'm from, Boston. Yeah. And, and I'm, the, I'm the only coach to go into his house out of high school. So what people forget with Nick, Nick was here for five years. Not, not Nick was here for five years. Nick didn't graduate this year. He graduated a year ago. Okay. And... So he handled his end of the bargain and Nick, Nick, Nick could have left. He didn't come back from, from money. You know, he, he didn't, he didn't get any, um, Nick's decision after Nick was never coming back here it was, uh, okay. Nick's, Nick's decision was either go play professional based on what he had accomplished here or try to use his year somewhere else. He opted to take the other path. And I'll tell you next year when I'm not playing or watching film or recruiting, I'm, I'm rooting like heck for the Kansas Jayhawks and Nick, Nick Timberlake. Yep. And some of that selfish reasons, because I'm the only guy, the first ever guy. Really ever really recruited. Go yeah, so I want to see him do well, because you know what? I got a couple guys coming up the pipeline this year 
they got a chance to be every bit as good and maybe better. So good for you, Gar. So staying on that, just a couple of a different kind of questions as it relates to the game today, really the off the court stuff. You know, there was a day not too long ago, Pat, uh, that, you know, the one and done concept for like some of these, you know, big five power schools, you know, the, the, the one and done's, the Kentuckys, the Dukes, they've come their freshman year, highly touted, they're gone, they go off to the NBA. And it was schools at your level um, that carried players for three and four years and you had a chance to develop you know, a chemistry and a system and a family, et cetera. But now with NIL, it's not uncommon for, for, the, for kids at your level to come one year, go over there, go, you know, go out to Portland, go out to, you know, UMBC, whatever, et cetera. They're going to look for the best deal. So I'm going to go about this NIL thing a little bit differently. I'm going to ask you, how do you adjust to that? Like you have been in the successful way of building family and camaraderie now your roster turnover year over year is much more than it ever was yeah it's a challenge i mean last year you know nil hits you know we win the league we're fortunate everybody came back and then now we had a good year we win 21 games last year we graduate a lot of guys nick was the only guy that asked to leave so we're going to bring back so i think it's seven or eight guys who we, we i think that's a not lot bad. of them a lot of them appreciate what we try to do for them. Now, with that said, this is where I think, you know, Steve Eigenbrot's really good and, and our, he's educating our, our university. We, we've got to get behind this um, and, and grow this collective um, and use our student athletes as, as assets because that is based on what you said, Gary, and you're correct. That is the water that we're in. doesn't matter what, somebody thinks about it. doesn't matter what Pat Scary thinks about it. Uh, that's the landscape. And, and, and we, we've got to adjust to that. So it's, it's, it's another challenge. You know, a lot of people listen to the show. I would strongly encourage them to hit the go collective because we need you. Mm, okay. And then let me ask you another question about the kids, right? You, you just said you've been here since 2011. So now you're going into your 12th, you know, 12th into your 13th year you know, a generation is defined as every 14 years. So you're about to coach the next generation that. of players, right? Okay, just by a sheer definition. My question to you is, knowing that, that there's a new generation and inside NIL and this new landscape, are the kids different? Like, how do you compare a kid from 2011 and 12 in the old system to a new generation of kid today? Well, I think one, we've got good staff and resources around them. So we really try to invest in the kids. What we sell guys is we're going to dominate your day with a routine to help you develop good habits, you know, put you on a roadmap to success. So we try to adjust to that. I did not know a generation was 14 years of age. What I will tell you is what I will tell you is over the last three years, we've changed how we do things offensively. Uh, I think that's, that's adapted to the modern game. And I will tell you that um, while I might seem intense, there's a lot more Ted Lasso to me over the last couple over the last couple of years uh, than maybe in my my earlier career, um, and and I'm happy to I'm happy to think that I that I'm hopefully improving and evolving as, as a coach, um, and that I'm at a place that's committed to, like you said, as there's a new generation coming in, evolving with what that means and what we need to do. Gary, does that mean that the kids that he's got now? have an, uh, an extra uh, a coaches of a different era now? Yeah, exactly. It's a new exactly. generation coach. Uh, hey, one thing I got to talk about, I got to take a pause right here to tell you about a place that stays great through every year, and that's the Costas Inn at 4100 North Point Boulevard. They've been there at the same location for 52 years. And if you're planning to get crabs right now for the first time this season, are you, Pat, are you a crab eater now? Have you given up love, lobster? Have you given up I, lobster for Maryland crabs? I love crabs. I will say this, Gary. Maryland, people that have grew up in Maryland are surgical when it comes to <laughs> breaking open a crab. You, as an outsider, you'll never True. have that skill. You'll right. never have that skill. But anyone that wants to crack crabs for me, I'm happy to eat all the crab meat there is. 
Oh, I like. It. Well, if you're planning to do that at the Costas Inn, that was a great commercial for the Costas Inn, but it was really a commercial for crabs in in general. If you're planning to eat crabs, you got to have a little bit of a plan. That's the word, plan. 410-477-1975. Call up, find out what's available, what night, what size, how much the cost is, and you'll get it all at the Costas Inn. But you can't just show up there and be assured you will get crabs. 410-477-1975 or go online at costasin.com. Back with Pat Scary. Pat, I know point guard is an important position to you. So I did a little homework with the help of uh, our managing editor, Luke Jackson. He tells me you've got two kids. One of them is Ryan, is it Ryan Conway? Transfer right. from Stephen Hall. And he's a transfer from Seton Hall, and he played for Kevin Willard. Is he giving you any of Kevin's secrets? <laughs> Kevin obviously has. Kevin's like a Jedi. He's got a lot of successful secrets. I don't think he gives those. I don't think he gives those up to anybody. But Tell Ryan us a little a, bit about it. Tell us a little bit about Ryan. Yeah, Ryan had a really good freshman year for us. Um, he, he's a he played at Delaney High School, so he's yep. a you know, state kid. player. Yeah, state player of the year. We're, we're going to need him to have a huge sophomore year. He's a gym rat, comes from a great family. His, his brother, Chris, is one of my assistants, who's a rising star in the profession. And, and Ryan averaged eight points a game for us as a freshman, playing 20 minutes, and he shot 43% from the three-point line. We're expecting a big jump this year from Ryan. He is a, uh, he's a good guard, but he's an elite shooter. Elite shooter. How about the other one, Rodier Hicks, uh, who's a, what's he, a uh, sophomore? Junior. Junior. He's going to be a junior. He's he's played a lot of minutes for us. He's one of our captains. He totally understands ball security. He's elite on the ball defensively, um, and, and, and he's a winner. Um, you know, he missed about 10 games last year with, with an injury. We, we, we need to keep him healthy. And I'm going to give you one other name because I redshirted. Him last year, he's going to be really, really good. A freshman from Good Council High School team takeover AAU, Dylan Williamson. Remember, okay. you heard the name. Remember, you when you're hitting me up next year. What point? What, what, year. What, what, right now. what position is he? He plays the point. He's the point. He plays guard. the point. He is probably the most dynamic uh, handler creator that 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 we've had. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, what are the rules? So you're so you're practicing now, but like how how long can you practice for? Great, great. So we get um, we have eight weeks where we can work them out eight hours a week. So four of that's in the in the um, in the weight room, and four of that's on the court, and and so that's a Division One rule. And then what happens is we're actually going in August to play up in Toronto and Montreal. We're going to play five games up there, so we're afforded. 10 additional practices. We mm -hmm. haven't used any of those yet. Starting like the last five weeks of summer school, we'll practice twice a week. So um, we've got 12 of our 13 scholarships filled, Gary. And we, we need one more guy. And, and we hope we're close on that. But some of that recruiting has changed because of because of the portal. And um, it, 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 I think it's on recruiting now is on more of a continuum than ever. When is the last day that you can actually sign a player for the upcoming season? Great compliance question. You have to have the kid enrolled by the 10th day of class in the fall. Hmm. Really? So Not basically at the end of, end of August, early September, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Pat, let me ask you one more. You mentioned uh, Lasso. I don't know if you watch the show or not, right? I think it's a great Love show. Love it. Of course I do. My favorite okay. character. That's a great, great Roy reference. Gary, Absolutely. My favorite character is Roy Kent. I love that guy. <laughs> oi, oi. <laughs> so, you know, especially season number three was a lot of the storyline was devoted to mental health. And they really went into, you know, a lot of the players off the field situations, etc. From a coaching perspective, how much do you now focus on that? And has that changed over time? thousand percent. I've become more educated in that area, uh, more aware in that area, and hopefully more uh, empathetic. I'm also proud of our university and our athletic department. You know, we've, we have um, a sports performance coach, a sports psychologist. We, we've, 
we started a full-time division of Blake Kospolis. And then we have a woman uh, the last two years, Amanda Clements, who's worked directly with our team. She's a former uh, gymnast at, at Towson. And it's been in incredibly helpful to our student athletes. You know, I, I think what you learn is a little bit like I was telling at the beginning, you don't know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes. So you just, you just can't, you just can't assume certain things. I try to be upfront with our guys because the one thing I want to express to them is nothing to be embarrassed about. Like we want to help you, but we're also not mind readers. So if something's going, if something's going on, you know, I, we want to know so that we can, we can, we can help. Coach, before we let you go, I just wanted to ask you, uh, I know the coaching fraternity at a given school is, can be pretty tight. And I know you were pretty tight with Rob Ambrose. Rob is no longer the football coach over at Towson. Pete Shinnick is, have you gotten to talk to Pete, your insights about what you think he'll do with the program there? Well, yeah, I would tell Tiger football fans, I think he's going to do a great job. I and mean, Rob, Rob did a great job for us. And obviously is a, is a, a terrific coach. Um, and a took wonderful the program. person. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He took the pro a great guy and he took the program to places it's never been before. I've been, I've, I've been around uh, coach Shinnick uh, quite a few times and um, we're down at conference meetings and, and I, I think he's going to, he's going to continue to do a great job much like Rob that he's a really, really good person. They've got a great staff. And, and, and don't forget, I think the one thing that really probably hurt our, I'm not a football guy, but probably hurt our football program a couple of years ago. What was the COVID and canceling yeah. a season and almost like starting from scratch. I'm not sure anybody, anybody could have um, you know, come, come out from that. Um, yeah. But I will say, I think, I think the program's in tremendous hands. All right. Last, I agree. Thing I, last thing I've got for you, you mentioned a couple of times, the meetings you were at the CAA. Uh, what's the strength of the conference right now? Does everybody seem to be pretty committed to this conference that's playing in this conference right now? I think so. You know, um, in some ways it reminds you of the old, uh, like when I was in the Big East, you have, it's a tricky, Joey D'Antoni does a great job, but it's a tricky job because half the schools play football, half don't. You go from Boston down to Charleston, South Carolina, but, uh, yeah, I think so. Because of the numbers, we have 14 members now. Yeah. Um, I, I think the old saying there is strength in numbers. But I will tell you this, Stan, I've, I've learned this. Uh, it's conference office, athletic directors, and presidents that make those decisions about who's in a league and how many. It is absolutely not. It's above your pay grade. It's above, it's your pay above grade. my pay grade. I'm going to ask you one more that's not above your pay grade. I know you probably knew Mark Turgeon pretty well at the University of Maryland uh, and his uh, successor, Kevin Willard, uh, who I thought had a fabulous first year there, given the timing when he got in. Can you appreciate, I know it's a different place, whole different environment. Can you appreciate how good a job he did this year? He, he did a tremendous job. We've stolen when he was at Seton Hall, a lot of his, um, I like to call specials, um, he, he, very, very good coach. And, and I, I think what I would, the one thing I've learned around here, um, obviously Maryland is a, to me, a top 10 to 20 program in the country. It's a brand name, you know, it's a brand name place. There's unbelievable tradition at the university of Maryland. Um, I hope that the Terp fan base, two things, one, that they will be patient and understanding um, because I, I think they've, they've got a very good coach. And the second thing I would like to say to Maryland and all the Terp fans out there, we would love to host you at CQ Arena. <laughs> I think I'd love to see that too. And I see no reason why Coach Willard won't do that one day. Gary, you got a final question for Coach? You know, Pat, I, I wouldn't ordinarily ask this question, but I think that, you know, the relationship that we all have together, I think is warrants something like this. And that is, you know, I, I, I went to Towson and I actually called the games back in the late 80s, early 90s when Terry Truax was there and they went to a couple of NCAA tournaments back to back, Oklahoma and Ohio State. Tigers haven't been back since. You've gotten them close. OK, I know that you want to get there, obviously. My question's a little different. Coaching conference tournament basketball as close as you've Gary, gotten. 
Gary, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are you saying that he needs to hire you as the play-by-play -play voice? And that will probably get wouldn't hurt, back. but probably wouldn't if that's going to help. If that's going to help, you're in. Let me tell you. Yeah, but that's not what I'm go saying. Ahead with, go ahead with your Coaching I'm sorry. Co tournament basketball, conference tournament basketball, getting to the precipice, but not getting there. My question is, how, is it different coaching in tournament basketball? And what are the takeaways that you have learned from that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think first every season is different. I, I would tell you probably a little bit earlier, um, you know, maybe thought, hey, we need to have a different theme going into it. Um, and also my first couple, my second year, we didn't get to play in it. Um, so the third year was kind of like the first year. First year. Yeah. I, I think there's some, I think you got to have some good fortune. That's been the one thing that's held us back. We've, you know, we've got, I think it's seven or eight top three finishes in the league and, We've been over 18 wins eight times in the last decade. Uh, but, you know, we, we got to win three games in March. That's what that's what you're hired to do. That's what drives me. Um, you know, uh, like I, each season is like a different deal. Like coming out of COVID, as you know, our, you know, we won the league. And then our arguably our best player, Charles Thompson, got hurt in the quarterfinals. That wasn't good. Last year, Charleston was the best team. We lost three one-possession games to them. Um, but I also think in some ways our guys did a great job because we played the last 30 games without our all league quarterback, Jason Gibson. And, you know, so there's, a, I think there's a lot that goes into it. Um, what I've always tried to focus on Gary is I, I I've never been like, Hey, it's only about three games. Uh, you know, I don't think a formula to win in a conference tournament is to come in eighth, ninth place. I know it can happen, but. You know, I'm hoping and I believe we'll be right at the top of our league again. And then I hope like heck we can play our best basketball for three days um, in, in March or that we're in a position to do that. I think the reality a lot at the high mid-major level is, you know, sometimes there's going to be heartbreak. But we believe and our staff believes that if you keep pounding, you know, you're eventually going to knock the wall in. Gotcha. We appreciate it. Coach, you the best. appreciate it. Great answer. And uh, we appreciate you keeping pounding. You play at a lovely arena, the CQ Arena. And I look forward to getting back out there on a little bit more regular basis. All right. Thank you, guys. You have a gallivant to Gary and stay in the fan. Go Tigers. All right. Go Tigers. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Papa Pat. Hey, just want to thank Papa Pat. I like that. Uh, and again, congratulations on winning Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award. Very All well right? deserved. Very well deserved. AJ Michaels has been one of our sponsors, and we told you a little bit about them. They've got heating, AC, plumbing, and home performance. AJ Michaels will help improve your home's energy efficiency and comfort levels. All right. And also the Costas Inn, 4100 North Point Boulevard. Make your plan now by calling 410 477 1975. Make your plan to eat crabs in the next week. All right. Talk to you all soon. For Pat Scary, Gary Thank Stein, you. I'm Stan the Fan. Next Thursday night at 6 o'clock, Gary Stein and I will talk to the new head of the Maryland Stadium Authority, Craig Thompson. You'll want to watch that for sure. Okay? Talk to you later, guys. Bye.